Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? I don't know about you, but I love an old pair of shoes. Old, comfortable pair. I have like two or three of those, I think, laying around. I have to dig around in my closet to see how many I have. And some of them I really can't even wear anywhere because they're just so worn out that they really don't look all that good. But I still can't bear to throw them away because they're, they're old friends. And sometimes we can get stuck with characters. We can get stuck with a character class or an archetype or just a character persona, more often than not, that we just kind of use as our default because it's comfortable. We know how to do it. And so this video is about that a little bit. It's actually inspired by something uh, that, let me see if I get this right, Umbry Shadow Song uh, posted in a comment to my resurrection video yesterday, both in a comment uh, on YouTube and then under a different moniker uh, on Facebook on the Brigade page uh, about this, where they, they said, essentially, I'm kind of expanding a little bit, um, that if somebody was going to just end up playing the same you know, carbon copy character of the one that just died, you know, complete with the same motivations, the same goals, maybe like out of game, you know, uh, metagame type knowledge, you know, they're pretty much playing the same person, different body, reskin, so to speak, then you might as well just let them get resurrected. So you know, I don't necessarily agree 100%, but I understand where they're coming from. And I, I think there's different fix, if there is a fix to that situation. But, you know, it was a point well taken. And so we've all known players that um, play, no matter what, they're always playing the same character. And sometimes they're playing the same exact class, same exact archetype. You know, it's, it's always the same, the same skill set, the same, same person shows up, concept shows up, no matter what, even if it's not relevant to the game. I think uh, it's like uh, Robin's Laws he talks about um, people that, <clears throat> gamers that are the, the specialist. They're just always going to play their special character, no matter what. You know, probably it's even more funny. Um, and maybe more common, is they play the same persona, no matter what. You know, I have plenty of friends that just, just no matter what, how they reskin the character, or, you know, what kind of what kind of class they uh, they play, or, or archetype, depending on the game system, uh, skill set, uh, stated um, personality, <laughs> or motivations, the same guy always shows up at the table, the same game persona. Sometimes it's a... Uh, I guess you'd call it a, a, an avatar of themselves, but often it's not really that. It's just kind of this gaming persona that shows up, and that's their character. I have one uh, acquaintance in particular. It, it's kind of comical when it comes right down to it. He will become sick of his character at some point, and you know, either kill him off or just decide, I don't want to play this guy anymore. We're gonna, I'm going to make a new character. And we all know what's going to happen. Really, he's not sick of his character. He's sick of that stat block. He's sick of the, that set of abilities, you know, whatever it is. He just wants to, you know... Pretty much reskin. He wants to get a new body, <laughs> reskin, because the same character shows up at the end of the day. So, you know, we kind of accept him, you know, for who he is, and that he's going to do that. But that's, uh, you, you know, what I'll tell you, what, I, I have been guilty of both, and I have to, you know, keep tabs on myself because there are certainly, um, I guess you call them archetypes or classes or particular guys that show up. Um, I have some character personas that I'm more comfortable with, and some of them are very useful for exploring a new game. You know, if I if I play a uh, action-oriented, impulsive guy who may, you know, looks or leaps before he looks, I can really kind of explore a game's you know, systems and see well, how that all works. That's a very comfortable guy to play sometimes. But, you know, it's always important to kind of branch out and see, like, who else can I play? What other guy can I... Uh, or what other personality, I suppose? What other set of motivations? What other skill sets can I uh, explore? And so that's something to be uh, be aware of. You know, I think when it really comes down to it, it's really not an issue of, you know, let's let's keep a resurrection mechanic in or something, you know, something like that. I think it comes down to player maturity and player accountability. There's a maturity level where you decide, hey, you know what, I'm not going to, or we're going to call you out on metagaming when you, know, you play your new character and they have the knowledge that the old one did or they carry the old grudges <laughs> or I think they have the same context or, you know, whatever the, whatever the uh, context might be. There's also that, um, I guess... A, Accountability to uh, not only the other players to not do that, but accountability to yourself to allow yourself to experience a different character. You know, we're definitely, you know, exploring the game world, whatever it might be, through our characters. You know, that's, that's a given. But that doesn't always have to be the same person. It can be very uh, liberating. You know, what, what, what happens really is we're robbing ourselves of, uh, ourselves of the experience of playing, you know, different personalities, different sets of motivations. Um, different skill sets if we we're just kind of stuck on one. And we're robbing the other players of, you know, maybe like having a more uh, more verisimilitude, you know, where the same guy just doesn't show up all the time. You know, kind of tangentially, um, which I just, you know, I didn't know if I want to make a different video or not, but nah, I'm just going to throw it in there. There's some other mechanics which I find, they're not quite resurrection, but they're interesting. And maybe they're not mechanics, they're like concepts. 
um, something like, you know, if you watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine, I think they're called the Vorta, they're part of the Dominion race, where these, there's a particular race of people, should they get uh, killed, well, they have a clone backup, and they can, and they'll have most of their memories, except probably the ones where they got killed. Occasionally, the personality will vary. That's something I, I would lo love to use for, like, an NPC race. That's not something I think uh, would be great to have available to players. That's just my own personal opinion. I also really dig, you know, um, the uh, the new Cylon vibe that came on the remake of, of Battlestar Galactica. That was, that was kind of nifty. Once again, kind of a... Uh, Kind of an NPC thing. I don't think that would be something I'd really want available to, to players. I wouldn't want it available to me as a player. I think it would feel a little bit too much like cheating. Um, but that's that's kind of that's kind of a neat uh, neat little vibe. And you know, probably one of the things that really intrigues me about uh, Eclipse Phase is that whole vibe in, in that game, where you know you you store a digital backup. This is they did not make this up. This is an old old sci-fi idea. You store a digital backup of yourself, you know, back it up every once in a while. It's in a remote say, site or whatever. And you go someplace dangerous, and should you get killed, well, then you can get backed up. You won't have any of those memories from the point you backed yourself up. However, you also have this little cortical stack, I think is what they call the device, implanted in your skull. And if that gets retrieved, well, then you have your memories up to your moment of death. Now, that's kind of neat. Or I think there's also this, this uh, vibe where you can beam your intel or, you know, your memories, your consciousness, you know, off-site if there's a, a suitable satellite or, you know, whatever piece of technology you need. So you're going you're gonna to die, you know you're going to die, you, you beam your consciousness out that way. So now you have all your memories intact. Kind of a neat little, uh, neat little shtick. But here's the thing where it gets, um, where you get back to player maturity and player accountability. The possibility exists that, of course, that you, uh, you don't successfully do that. And now you're not re really aware of the circumstances of your death. Part of it could be you're not sure who you killed you if somebody's got it out for you. Part of it is that the organization that you're working for, uh, they might have just, you know, either killed you or you know, got your cortical stack back and decided, no, we're not going to let him. He has sensitive information. We're not going to let him have it. So we're just going to uh, resurrect the backup. And even in the game, here's a spoiler coming. Um, there's a little piece of fiction in the game at the beginning where characters go down to some planet. It uh, you know, goes horribly wrong. They knew it was kind of a one-way trip. They have the ability to beam their consciousness back. This one character survives to this point um, because they have to beam this piece of information back. That's the whole point of their little mission there. They find that information, beam it you know, off-site, and he has the opportunity to beam his consciousness back. However, he's kind of a double agent. Not really. The thing is he's got a loved one in custody of a, a rival group. Contacts the rival groups as I have this information. They're like, now nah, we're not going to let your loved one go. We need more from you. And he decides, now that's not really a, a good deal. Um, and they say, well, you're, you're putting their life in jeopardy. Things are going to go really bad for them. And so they're not. It's not really said in the game, but it's kind of implied. Or at least the takeaway I, I got from that was that this person decided it would be too painful to live with that knowledge. So they're just not going to. Uh, they're not going to beam that uh, their, their current knowledge back. They're going to rely on the backup. And that was a player. You have to continue to play the game knowing things out of character that in character your character doesn't know. I think that's kind of neat and interesting. Very tangential. <laughs> totally different topic. But, yep, I, at the end of the day, I think it's about, uh, about maturity and accountability. And, uh, and sometimes about uh, being willing to step out of the box and play a character type. And some, you know, have some new role-playing personas besides the one you're really comfortable with. What do you think about all that? Am I crazy? I'm probably crazy.